<laughs> nah, I'm not that much of a hypocrite. All right, they said I got to be on for 15 minutes if nobody calls in. Two more minutes to go. Hello? Bishop? Nah, this is Minister Reggie. Bitch is on vacation. Can I help you with something? I really wish this was him. You want to wait until next week? No, this can't wait. Okay. What's going on? What do you need prayer about? I don't want to get into all that. Well, I kind of have to know what, what I'm praying about. How about this? I'll tell you something about me, and then you can tell me something about you. Just remember, what we discuss here is confidential. My wife and I are separated. My wife is cheating on me. You win. Well, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How? Did you catch her? You know the guy or something? No, she's different now. I don't want to explain it right now. But she's different, and I know. All right, well, I won't argue with you there. Is this what you want prayer about? No, I just need prayer for what I'm about to do. Well, what's that? End it all. Get married? My life. What? Bro, why? Work is crazy. Home is even worse. I'm just tired. Man, I get that, but here's the thing. You can't ask for forgiveness for something that you haven't done yet that you know you're going to do. Repentance doesn't work like that. Repentance is about change. So, we gotta hit this problem from a different angle. What angle? Have you ever read Ecclesiastes? At funerals, it's a time to live and a time to die. Yeah, the same, but 9-4. It says a live dog is better than a dead lion. What are you talking about? It's about hope. The message is about hope. When you are alive, there's hope. Man, you can fix your marriage or get a new one. You can get a new job. You. What you choose today dictates what happens the next. I am not trying to hear that greeting card stuff right now. Well, here it is. If you shoot yourself in the head, you're going to hell. And the life that you would have lived would have been miserable because you gave up on you. Really? Yeah. And plus, you know what the Bible says about a man who sleeps with a married woman? What? Forgive him? Nah, it says he sins against his own life. So if that's what's going on, God got that, bro. Really? Yeah. But listen, let me ask you a question. What do you do for, for a living? I do construction. When's the last time you had a massage? Never. Man, you gotta do that. You, you, you gotta take care of you. Let me ask you another question. When's the last time you and your wife been out on a date? Only anniversary since we had the kids. Man, you gotta do that too. Get a sitter. Take her out, show her a nice time. Get the spark back in your marriage. She probably not even cheating. She might just be bored. I guess it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. I feel a lot better, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem, man. God bless. One last question before I go. How did you know how I was going to do it? Well, I'll guess. Well, let me ask you a question. What's your name? My name is Marcus. Oh. Okay. Hey, hey, brother Marcus. Let me know if you need anything else. All right. Thanks again. Appreciate you, brother. God bless. What happens if you get a divorce? What's this about? I just hung up from a suicidal man named Marcus who's distraught because his wife is cheating on him. If someone's getting a divorce, why would they be that upset? Woman, go home. That man needs you. I didn't think he cared anymore. I wouldn't be here if he did. You and I are good, but what else? What else what? Stop talking in riddles. You don't have to be rude. Woman, you put my life in danger. You don't want to talk about it? What's there to talk about? So, do you want to tell him? I don't know. Do you? Not right now. Well, for now, we'll wait. But this here, this is over.
Reggie? Hey, bro. I ain't seen my in church in a while. Oh, they didn't tell you? I'm on sabbatical. You and I both know that sabbatical is really just a cold word for Bishop sat you down. Nah, man. Nothing like that. This actually was my idea. You know, it actually makes some sense because I remember talking to Bishop and uh, when I asked him about it, he said it was personal. So I figured, you know what I mean? Is, is your health all right? You good? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Is it... Is it a separation? Like, too much pressure? Kind of. And I know you're going to keep asking me questions, so I might as well tell you. Yeah, so it's done, man. It's over. But is it ever really over? Yeah. Blocked each other's social media, all that. I, I, I can't do that to another person. But they're adults, bro. I mean, he was whack in some capacity, and she chose you. I don't really see the problem. The problem is, it's adultery. And you know what the Bible says about adultery. We got time, bro. Yeah, but what happens when time runs out? What you saying? Listen, I know how you get down, and I'm not judging you. But me, I'm ready to make some real changes. Okay. So think about this for a second. We do guys work. And if I'm honest about it, we work really hard. So what's the problem if we get a little bit on the side? But how long are you going to do bad things and say you're a good person? You going to keep doing dirt and, and say your hands are clean? Listen, it's obvious God is calling me for change. And I'm not going to ignore his voice. Look at the Gospels. Every time Jesus met someone, they had a choice. Some followed, some rejected, some even stayed in the middle. But they had a choice. Bro, I choose to change. Uh, I get it, I get it. You John the Baptist. You John the Baptist now, right? You John the Baptist and tell Marcus. Tell Marcus that you was knocking off his wife. But you won't, will you? Because you want to do what you need to do to protect yourself, just like me. Just like you? What? <sighs> Don't worry about it, man. Uh, listen, uh, I got to meet somebody. I'm going uh, to catch up with you later, yo. It's like that? Nah, 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 nah man. It's, 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 not, it's not that, man. It's not that, I promise. Uh, Yo, when you die first, I'm going to do you yours. And hey, what happens when you die first? Want me to get die young. You know I'm a preacher. I ain't meant to be in some Bible study hidden from the world. That's what it is. You try to hide me from the world. I respect you. I love you. I see that God wants to do something in your life, but you've gotten ahead of yourself. Ministry is service to the Lord. So it seems like you're in lost sight of that. Now you caught up in your reputation. You feel like Bible study is beneath you. This path will cause you to become an abuser in the family. Half of them didn't even show up. I don't even know how many of them are going to come this week. I think that you're afraid that I'm going to get ahead of you. Is that what this is? Spiritual daddy, that's, that's, that's the problem. We nervous I'm gonna get ahead of you. Oh, so your perception has been twisted. I'm gonna call it strong delusion. I respect you, I love you, I have the best hopes for you. But right now, what's welling up inside of you is pride, ego. You're driven by the wrong impulse. You're about to kill your ministry instead of build it. Kill it instead of build it. I could take this church to the next level. You could take this church to the next level. To the next level. Well, if you persist in this path, let's be very clear. The next level is going to be outside, out the door, out the ministry. The best way to become a good leader is to be a good follower. And for some reason, you throwing that off. And I don't, I'm not interested in tolerating that. I've been around long enough to understand that when this right here rears his head, it needs to be chopped off. So you got an option. You can take our discussion under advisement, consider my perspective, or you can consist with your attitude, position, and sense of superiority, and I'm just going to show you the door. Oh, so it's like that? It's definitely like that. Have it your way. Bible study starts in about 10 minutes. I'll start that up. Okay, that's a good choice. 
Tonight, I'm going to come to Bible study and enjoy the teaching. Hello. Brother Reggie, it's Marcus. Oh, uh, hey, bro. How are you? I've been good, brother. Really been thinking about what we were talking about the other day. And me and my wife, we're going to work this thing out, bro. That's good to hear. So you done thinking she was cheating? I guess. Eh. Good. But no, I know she was. How? I know her. It's probably over, though. People aren't guilty while they still do stuff. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Most times they don't. I can forgive her. But as far as the dude, I'm going to kill him. Who? The dude that she was with. He done sinned against his own life. And like you said, <laughs> he's got it coming. Do you know him? Not yet, but I'm going to find him. This shouldn't take too long. Bro, listen. You got to leave that revenge stuff to God. You said the other day that you was cool with it. Listen, you got to make your mind up. And while you do that, please pray for me. All those when we leave, stay in the shelter now. Sorry about that. I'm at the range. And what was you saying again? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Have a good time. Hey, while I got you on the phone, where's a good place to start up in the scriptures? When you don't got a lot of time on your hands. Well, the Gospels, the epistles are good too. If you don't have a lot of time, parables and proverbs. What book is the parables? It's not a book. You, you can Google it, but uh, parables are just little stories that Jesus told to make a bigger point. What, like symbolism? Kinda. We should meet up sometime. You, uh, you like chicken wings from the Chinese store? <laughs> Sure, we can get a time to, to, to get together and meet up. Okay. All right, God bless. So what's important is to remember as people, we are bent. We have our issues and we came to God with our issues, but the big challenge is to change. But are you willing to change? Um, well. My name is Victoria. I haven't really been in church in many, many years. My grandmother used to take me and my sisters. Um, but after she passed, we just all kind of went different directions and went different ways in life. Uh, I will say that um, I've been going through a lot lately. And it's been feeling like it was unbearable. But I do remember my grandmother used to always tell us um, about how in the Bible it talks about coming to God, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and God will give us rest. I haven't felt like I had rest in a long time, but now that I'm here in the Bible study amongst the port, I feel that I can make steps to move on. So I know Bible study is on Tuesdays, so I decided to come. Well, Sister Victoria, I want to say, first of all, it's nice to meet you. Um, and thank you for opening up and sharing that testimony with us. I want you to pardon the expression that me and my brother made when you came in. Uh, this is actually Tuesday, the day of men's study. Um, women's studies on Thursday and our joint Bible studies are on Wednesday. But I want you to be comfortable. We don't want you to leave after service. Um, I want you to exchange contact information with you uh, so that we can start a dialogue and um, anything you need at all. Um, just know I'm one call away. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're actually planning on having communion. Uh, if you prepare for that, there's a sports drink right on that table. I know it's not exactly grape juice, but this is a men's study. Um, yeah, uh, do you have a Bible? Uh, I don't see one with you, so you can feel free to take mine. And we are discussing the topic of change. 
He knows. How do you know? I just talked to him. Is he talking about doing anything crazy? Yeah. He's talking about killing people. What? People? Yes. What did he say? He said you who can forgive, but he's going to kill the guy. So, this really doesn't have anything to do with me. What? You got me into this mess. Sir, you're an adult. Let me ask you a question. Was he mad? Like, angry? Did he raise his voice? That's the thing. He was calm. Like he was talking about anything else. That's no good. What's going on over there? Somebody's at my door. Do you think it's him? I don't know. Do you want me to call him? I don't know. Do you want me to answer the door? I wouldn't. He's too smart to kick it in. I just play it like you're not home. And if he breaks in, you know what's up. But if he leaves, he may not know yet. I'll call now. He means it. He gets in the zone. He was like that when he was in the service. Nothing is going to stop him from finding you. You need to stop calling me. He's probably going to check my logs and start listening to all the calls. What? Who is this guy? He learned all kinds of stuff in the service. I'm sorry. I really didn't think he cared anymore. This man cheated a lot before he came to the church. He said he changed, but I didn't believe it. Never really took the time that he should. He talked nicer, but that part didn't change. Hey, bro. I must have just missed you. I'm dropping you off something. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. You saved my life. I'll never forget that. I know it's not much, but I hope you like it. I figured the moment you saw it, you'd know what I meant. Study's over, Bishop. Hey. It's already over. Listen, I'm glad we had our conversation. Um, it's a lot that I can take from Bible study. I appreciate you taking the time. Okay. okay. God, please be with me in this situation. Hello? Maddie left her iPad the last time she was here. Do you know where it could be? I don't know nothing about that. But I need prayer. Is something wrong? Kinda. I'ma need more than kinda. All right, so I've been I've been dealing with this married lady from the church, and now we're ending it. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and tell them. I just don't know how you get yourself in these predicaments. You're mad. I should be. We're separated, not divorced. And you're not doing you? No, I take my vows seriously. All right, but this is my last time. You said that before. We've never been here before. Let me tell you something. I pray for you every night. And for the last few nights, I've had the same dream. It's about you. You're standing in front of two mirrors. In one, the whole room looks like it's on fire. In the other, you're in a peaceful place. I prayed on it, and I finally understand. There are moments where God shows people who they really are. He already knows, but he wants them to see. This is one of those moments. You have to choose who you're going to be and see what he's going to do about it. And then what happens? Just the mirrors. If you make it out of this, you should come here. We can talk. We have a lot to work on, but if God can forgive you, I'm sure I can. And if I don't? May God have mercy on your soul. 
Wow, it's like that. You made a choice. You put yourself in this mess. And you have to clean it up. Aren't you forgetting something? Love you. You didn't pray. I'm not going to. I've prayed enough. God has spoken, and it's time for you to answer. Welcome, welcome to my humble abode, Minister Reggie. We have a seat right here. Okay. You thirsty? You need anything to drink? Nah, I'm good, man. You sure? I'm good. So I'm about to grab me something to drink. I'm thirsty. Oh, you, by the way, you said you had something to talk to me about. I mean, I, I can wait till you come back. No, nah, no, nah, that would be rude of me to go and just keep doing what I'm doing. Why don't you just share with me what's going on, man? Man, life is complicated and God just has a way of making everything simple. Okay, and? Okay, so I, I met this woman. She was married, but in the process of getting a divorce. Her husband's been neglectful and likely cheating on her, so... As I told you before, my wife and I are separated. We started dealing with each other, but recently she found out that he's he's not cheating. He still loves her, so we were cool on everything. We just ended it. Man, it's like you got everything figured out. I don't, I don't even know what you're tripping about, man. It's all good. So... It was Tia. The woman was Tia. But I didn't know you two were still together when you called me. So you slept with her? Yes, but, but I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. You mean to tell me that you slept with my wife? Marcus, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. Out of all of the people in the world, it had to be you. Minister Reggie. Marcus, God brought us together. Man, don't hit me with that God stuff now, bro. You done done it now. Man, as a man, I was wrong. As as a minister, as a married man, I was wrong. Man, shut up and turn around. We can't talk about this. You heard what I said. Turn around. This is why I came over here. You deserve to know the truth. And fear should stop me from being a man and coming and telling you the truth. At the end of the day, whatever you decide to do, I know I'm right with God. Shut up. Every person deserves a proper eulogy, a testimony of the life that they've led. But what if? How long are you gonna do bad things and say you're a good person? You gonna keep doing dirt and, and say your hands are clean? Is it true? But what happens when time runs out? I haven't felt like I had rest in a long time. Some follow, some rejected, some even stayed in the middle, but they had a choice. You sent me to hell? I think it's best for us to handle this in a way, you know, that works for both of us. They're gonna leave me much money too. Should sure, next questions you want the answer to. Besides, I never lie to you anyway. How long are we gonna do this, man? I mean, can we ever really know? Hell. The answer is hell. You can change around the facts as much as you like, but it's always gonna come up hell. Are you going to tell the truth or not? I mean, what about the people? I mean, don't they deserve to be comforted after losing somebody that's close to the community? Okay, so we're gonna play this game. Do you remember how he died. But grace. Does that really apply in a situation like this? Only God knows. Yeah, God and a few other people. 
Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Nor the fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. I know the scripture. I know you do. So this shouldn't be complicated. The man sinned and he brought death and disgrace to himself and disgrace to his family. It's not that simple. It kind of is. It really is. Every man can change. I mean, just look at the thief on the cross. You know what? I hate when people bring him up. You do realize that was the first time he met Christ, right? Our dearly departed here was supposed to know him, right? So now you want to tell me he has some sort of deathbed confessional. That man was an adult, so are we. Okay? He made his own decisions. He was a disobedient hypocrite. So what am I supposed to tell his kids? Oh, I'm sorry your daddy went to hell, but you still got a chance to make it right. Okay, let's keep playing. You think they won't figure it out? Like everyone doesn't know it already? It's a matter of respect. Listen, respect based off of lies is just condescending. It's like telling kids there's a Santa Claus. You could call it what you want, but it's still a lie. Things are not that simple. They're not that black and white. In my walk, I've seen gray. Some black, some white, but mostly gray. <laughs> and how has that worked out for you? That's what I thought. Victoria, how many of these do you take? Just one or two a day. This is strong stuff. You should be careful. Okay, but I'm a big girl. Big or not, this isn't something you should be playing with. These are dangerous. They're prescription. I guess. I think you should talk to your doctor about giving you a lower dose. Okay, Dad. Are you going to leave me much money too? I'm serious. I will talk to my doctor, okay? Okay. Good. Will I see you next week? Maybe. I will take that as a yes. Call me later. Renee, where are you? Okay, good. Why am I up here? Wait, why are you still here? I believe she's not up until the end of the month. No need for it to sit empty. But you're paying rent somewhere else, though? Yeah, but everybody has their own grieving process. You should just respect that. I do. It's just... Just what? I'm concerned, that's all. Listen, I'm fine. You don't have anything to worry about. But we should be focused. We should focus on making things right for our system. And that's what we're doing today. I guess so. Um, is there something else on your mind? Yeah, the same thing that should be on yours. Paying for our sister's funeral? No, burn that church down. They should be the ones that's paying for this. <sighs> She's our sister. We cannot expect them to pay for that. It was on their watch. I remember the first week she started going around there. So, how do you like it? It's nice. It's good quiet, good study. Overall, it's a really great experience. <laughs> hmm. What's his name? <laughs> Here you go. It's not like that. First of all, I know you. Second of all, your boy crazy. Now, which one of these church boys got my little sister's time? He's really like a mentor to me. And he's really just trying to help me. I promise. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You're having sex with him, aren't you? Oh my God, Renee. <laughs> okay, sometimes. But at the end of the day, on a serious note, he really does give me hope. It's like, he gives me something to look forward to. When we're together, it's like, yes, we can. Oh, 
excuse me, you and Mr. Obama better go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, for real, if you like it, I love it. After everything that you've been through, you really do deserve to be happy. Do you mean it? I mean it. You got my vote, okay? I didn't even ask anything real about the guy. Not his name. I called him Mr. Obama because he gave her hope. Now look at her. She deserved better. Look, it's nothing we can do about that. Asha still had issues well before she came into that church. So does that mean they should make it worse? Having preachers take advantage of, of vulnerable people? Look, they're the ones who want the answer to God for that, not us. We need to focus on things that we can change. Like giving our sister a funeral she deserves. You know, the insurance won't pay, you know, because of... They should pay. We need to focus on things that are really going to happen, Renee. I'm making pay. And then you'll get locked up. And I love you, Renee, but I'm not bailing you out. Can you please be here with me? Please. Why? Now hurry up and eat. I gotta get my hair done and then meet this guy at the mortuary. So what is your motivation? What do you mean? To preach the gospel. What gospel? You know what? You should really try not asking stupid questions. <laughs> Is it, though? Like, what good news are you giving to people? Have you done anything to make their lives any better? Without question. Once a week, for two to three hours, people come to us, and they can lay their burdens down at the door. It's a transformative experience. Is it transformation if they keep having the same problems? No church is perfect. True, but did you preach to their need or yours? What was that supposed to mean? <laughs> You're not really the cry aloud and spare not type. What are you saying? I'm not the money, cars, and homes type. You're not. You're the I want them to like me type. <laughs> I think that's why you're having such a hard time coming to this conclusion. You worked so hard to please everyone that you missed the most important person. I disagree. I have a lovely wife. I have great kids. I make a good living changing people, helping people make change. I'm happy. My life is good. I meant God. I've done the work. Kingdom work. You've preached about him, but have you ever stopped to think that you should lead people to him? A relationship with him? No, wait, wait, wait. You were too concerned with letting people know that you were deep. You know, really vague messages, really small promises of increase, just never too big, just enough to get people hype. You know, play a little dancing music. <laughs> really vague messages that cover a lot of people at once. You know, never really like conviction, just advice. Let's face it, <laughs> you're not a preacher. You're a motivational speaker with a Bible. That's a lie. <laughs> we don't have to lie to each other. And besides, you can never lie to me anyway. Could you? This is our stop. Are, are you sure you want to do this? I have a wife. I have kids. I'm not saying that we need to stop, but... We do need to be more careful. Yeah, but it's live. I'm not leaving home. Listen, it's best for us to handle this in a way that works for both of us. Okay, well, let me ask you something. You know, if I were to keep it, you know, would you be there? We shouldn't ask questions we don't want to answer to. Besides, I could never lie to you anyway. Oh, okay.
Ladies, ladies, how you doing? You're late. I'm right on time. You're late. I'm right on time. You're late. I'm right on time. At a library, though? Where's your office? I don't need an office. I save money on bricks and mortars. And I pass that savings right on to you. I mean, I guess that means that. Exactly. Go. Follow me. So I shouldn't help? <laughs> you can, but do you need your camera phone to do that? The videos we put up online inspire people to do more good. For who? Their fellow man. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this, because you've been doing this for a long time. Out of all of the videos that you post, do people tell you that you're a good person, or do they ask you how can they help? There's greedy preachers everywhere, all over the place. We're changing the narrative. We're giving people inspiration to want to do more good, change the world one brick at a time and have more faith in God and more understanding that we're trying to do more than just get money from it. That's a good byproduct, but why do you do it? You know what this is about, just like I know what it's about. Spell it with me now. B-R-A-N-D. Branding. How did you know? Because it's all about the brand and not about the man. So everybody that posts videos online is trying to look good? I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you right now. So how are people supposed to know to support us if the videos aren't up? How many people have you helped without posting it online somewhere? I'll wait, but you and I both know the answer to the question. So you can go ahead over there and help if you want to. I'm gonna just say it like this. Do you need your camera phone to do that? It's up to you. First thing I want to say is, I'm terribly sorry about your loss. We don't plan for things like this, and when they happen, they're hard. But I'm here to help. Thanks, Paul. Do you have the options we discuss over the phone? I do, I do. First option, number one, is pre-owned. Only one owner. It's waxed oak, it's beautiful, and has a reinforced bottom. Wait, did you just say pre-owned? I did. The second option is black. Now, this one is, is a little large. So right now we're running a special now, 60% off. That's less than wholesale. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? It is. Is this one pre-owned too? Yes, only two owners. Two owners? I'm gonna need you to define pre-owned. So someone owned it, and they no longer need it. So we took it over their hands. What is this, like a secondhand mortuary? Something like that. Let, let's go over this third option. The third option is an antique. Now this one is half off of the black one. This one being half off, primarily because it's slightly damaged when we were excavating it. Excavation? You mean like digging? Absolutely. So you dig up dead bodies? Well, we excavate caskets, and then we evict the prior owners. So you take dead bodies out the ground? Um, I got a feeling, did you watch the commercial or? Used um, caskets? Who sells used caskets? I actually thought they were nice. He was just trying to pass the savings on to you anyway. I'm serious. It's a light and up. It was just oh, a I joke. I hate being blindsided. I hate being blindsided. It's ridiculous. Okay, it was just a joke and I know that something's wrong with you right now. <sighs> Sam got laid off the other day. I was gonna sell my car to come up with half of, half of the money. Are you serious? <sighs> Why didn't you say anything to me? I could have gotten him a job at where I work or something. When have you ever known me to come to either one of you with my problems? That's not the point. 
I'm your sister. I could have, like, helped you out or something or at least, like, look for a job for him. How long has it been? It was the same day that, you know. Oh. Hello. Okay, I left the door unlocked. You can come right in. Okay. Thank you for coming, sis. Uh, yeah, why am I here? Uh, I told you before, on the phone, I can't say. You can't say, you better say. With me taking off of work and everything. It's private. What? A private procedure? Mm, just private. Wait. Did you get your butt done or something? No, nothing like that. Nothing. Because I know it wasn't no tummy tuck or no kids. <laughs> I would never get tummy tuck. Or no kids. No. Not anymore. Wait. Wait. No, wait. Did you... Really? Yeah, I did. And no, I'm not anymore. What does he have to say about all of this? What do you mean? It was his idea. <laughs> what kind of church do you go to? <laughs> the normal kind like yours. Nobody in my church get down like that, honey. That you know of. But we decided to keep it between us. Nobody knows. And um, I didn't want to break up a happy home. Wait, wait, Victoria. Of all the men you decided to date, you date a married preacher? Oh. I mean, what if I told you I loved him? What if I told you you're going to hell? <laughs> That's what you're wrong, because see, the other day, we were in Bible study, he was going through one of the scriptures. <laughs> wait, and wait, I was, wait, wait, who was teaching the study? It's him, isn't it? It's him. Victoria, do you think he would teach you something that make you want to stop? Mm, uh, I guess not. But what if I told you that I love him? <laughs> what if I told you you're going to hell? Hell? Okay, all right. <sighs> Let me rephrase this. Sorry. Victoria, if you don't get your life together, you're going to go to hell. Honey, we, we could still get married. <laughs> Mary, really? Do you think if he was going to leave his family, he did that long time ago? You know what? I got to get out of here. I can't. Uh, I can't. Alex. I can't. So we all could have done better. Including that church. So what are you saying? Listen, go in there and have a conversation. Don't hurt nobody. Please. Okay. Fine. Take a deep breath. Do you feel that? Every breath that we take is an acknowledgement of the gift of life. It's an acknowledgement that for at least that moment, we are free from death because we all must face death and the grave, but not everyone will be saved. Seriously, this is getting old. Don't worry, it'll all be over soon. What does that even mean? You really think that you're a good person, like a good guy? As I am, I'm not some drug dealer or some pimp. You can pick me apart all you want. It's not gonna change the facts. I've dedicated my life to helping people. What then? Are we better than they? For we previously- Did you just both. come here to quote scripture? Listen, if that's all you're gonna do, it's time for you to go. Unless you got something significant to say, I got a eulogy to write. It's enough of this. Right, right, the eulogy. So whose funeral is it? That's a stupid question. Is it? I thought it was a simple question. Whose funeral is it, Francis? It's a program right there. It's a waste of my time. Listen, 
Just answer the question and I'll leave. I don't have to. I don't have to answer to you. I don't have to be who you told me to be. I don't have to. I... This is my life. It is. So stop with the talk about dedication. Sure, you had the job and you did some good, but that's what you were supposed to do. That doesn't change what you did. I did nothing wrong. Liar. You abused your position. I help people. You prostituted your gift. I help people. Liar. You prostituted your gift. I help people. You had an affair with a member and manipulated her when the consequences got too real. Are you gonna tell me whose funeral this is? We should leave. Something I need to show you. Where? You can pretend all you want, baby. That's not gonna change anything. Oh, so it's like that? It's definitely like that. Bible study starts in 10 minutes. I think I should get downstairs. Study's over, Bishop. Hey. It's already over. Listen, I'm glad we had our conversation. Um, it's a lot that I can take from Bible study. I appreciate you taking the time. Okay. Yeah, I need to talk to the bishop. Wait, you're knocking on the door. Is this some sort of an emergency? Oh, no, it is emergency. I just okay. lost my sister, and I need to talk to you. Okay, come on in, my sister. If you don't mind, I'll take you to my office. What's your name? Would you like something to drink, my sister? No. Okay. I was just trying to make you comfortable based on what's coming next. And what's next? Well...
believe in God. I've been going through a lot lately. And I feel like it's unbearable. Okay, well, let me ask you something. You know, if I were to keep it, you know, would you be there? Victoria, do you think he would teach you something that make you want to stop? Are, are you sure you want to do this? What? What if I told you that I love him? <laughs> what if I told you you're going to hell? Yeah, but it's alive. I'm not leaving home. Listen, it's best for us to handle this in a way that works for both of us. You shouldn't ask questions we don't want to answer to. Besides, I can never lie to you anyway. Victoria, what are you doing? Are we done playing? Is this starting to look familiar? She wouldn't listen. Would you? This wasn't the first time she tried to kill herself. You know, I was reading the Bible today and I stumbled across Revelations. And it talked about how cowards and the sexually immoral and murderers were all going to hell. Is that true? Victoria. Is it true? I didn't know. You knew something was up, though. It's hard to save someone and sleep with them at the same time. That abortion was the last straw. How could you not notice the difference? I wasn't paying attention. Not now, Victoria. Is it true? We have time, Victoria. Are you kidding me? You sent me to hell? You know the crazy thing? She was never attracted to you. It was your gift. That little piece of God that she could see. It was hope. Or something close. You were a mirage. Just close enough to draw her in. But just far enough to be dangerous. There wasn't enough time. It was more than enough time. Just made the wrong choices. So what's next? You and I both know what's next. My sister, you mind if I tell you a story? I really don't have time for a story.
$80,000. So what we'll do, I'll have my administrator cut the check. She'll write the check. That way that'll cover the funeral expenses. And that should meet any additional needs for the family while you go through this season of loss. But I have one request. I want you to ask yourself a question. It's the what about me question. So let's rewind. When you came in, there was energy at the front door. I can't forget that now. But I think we done got past that. And I understand. So you was mad and hurt by Francis, his behavior. About church people. But the problem is, what about you? What will you do? Let's say somebody like your sister stumble up into your life. Are you in a position to help? And see if you ask yourself the what about me question. When people have needs, you don't have to wait until God asks that question of you later on and you ill-equipped. What about me? You want to do that? All right, Renee. So how did it go? That's how $80,000? Yeah. Wow. No, I'm, I'm still shocked myself. I gotta tell you all about the conversation. Wow. Let's go. As you can see, you are still alive. You should thank God. I feel like he crossed our paths for a reason. You saved my life with your words, and I'm saving yours with this understanding. There was a parable about a man that owed a debt, and the king forgave him that debt. Then the same man went on to abuse someone who owed him. When the king found out, he locked the man up. You saved my life, and tonight, I consider us even. If you create any further debt, I'm going to collect. Peace between me and thee, while we're absent one from another. Don't contact us again, Marcus. Hey, Bishop. Did you get my voicemail? No, what voicemail? Francis is dead. We'll go over the details when I see you. Can you make it here today? Of course. I'm sorry for your loss. I, I know you two were close. Yours too. I'll see you soon, Bishop. I appreciate that. I'll see you today at noon. There's a lot to discuss. So does anybody know? Some suspect, but no one really knows for sure. Reg is preaching, so they'll stop questioning it. They'll be so excited. The story that your family went with was you tried to stop her from hurting herself and she acted out. I guess that's the best thing to come out of this. Fake it if you can't make it, right? You can't fool everyone. Did I actually help anybody? Without question. You ran a race, you just didn't have endurance. You never really wanted to make it in any way. You just did not want to. It's a huge difference. So the work I did, did that count to help me get in or? Who was it for? That's fair. But why did you wait till now? I've always been talking to you. 
every day, every decision, but you shut me out. You shut me out because you knew what you wanted. It's finally got quiet enough to listen to me. Think I wanted to see you go out like this? No. If it makes you feel any better, a lot of people are in the same situation. It doesn't. But I'm glad you were honest with me. We don't lie to each other. And besides, I could never lie to you anyway. 